Hey guys, it's your boy Slow here. Welcome to another episode of Benfica Career Mode. Boy, what a week it's been for Benfica this week. Um, George Jesus has just stepped down to go and take over from their rival, Sporting Lisbon. And the main reason for that would be the money. They're offering up to £6 million if they re reach their objectives. And that compares to around, I think, £4 million it was that Benfica was paying for him. Um, this is going to be quite a blow for all the Benfica fans and obviously for uh, Benfica's president, which is not too happy about it, obviously. Uh, but all this comes from money, or what some people like to call stolen money, uh, from the Mozambican or Angolan uh, lot that own or used to own Besh, uh, the bank that went bankrupt. The irony. And uh, so, yeah, now Sporting Lisbon have Jorge Jesus. Um, I don't know why you'd go to a second-rate team, but there you go, it happened. Uh, obviously, um, the rumours are that um, Benfica will get Vitória from Guimarães. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's called Vitória from Vitória Guimarães. And he will be joining Benfica. That's so far a rumour, uh, but that's what's likely to happen. In terms of my lack of videos, well, I've been a bit ill. I've had the flu for a week. I've only just recovered, so I haven't really uh, been in the mood or, or had the voice to record any videos. Uh, but yeah, you'll be glad to know that I'm back and everything should resume as normal. Um, and let's get back to the game. As you can see up there, I'm putting players up for sale. Um, I'm thinking of getting rid of Juniak. I think I said that in the last episode. He isn't really working up front there for me. Um, which will allow me to sort of make a little revolution in the team and there are some exciting players on the way obviously I'm not going to give anything away now uh, but hopefully you will see it later on and boy is it exciting uh, this will be divided up into two episodes so it's basically the silly season and uh, players that I would love to see in Benfica and hopefully you guys will be happy with that uh, but as always leave some comments and let me know what you think of my transfers the players I bought uh, do you think I've made any mistakes? Is there anyone that I should be getting rid of at the end of the season? Obviously, normally you wouldn't go and spend millions and millions in the January transfer window, but I feel like I need to prepare uh, because players like Gaitan and Salvio could leave at any moment. So I feel like I should prepare before it's too late. If anyone makes a decent offer, uh, I'll usually counter offer with a much larger sum if they accept it. I'll sell the player, that'll be fine, and hopefully it'll allow me uh, to buy an even better player, someone that will progress uh, and get a better overall than my current players. That's the uh, uh, what I want. I also want a, a strong team for next season for the Champions League, because I do intend to win it. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll leave this sped up so you can see uh, the little details. You can pause, slow it up, whatever you want to do uh, to see what I actually get up to between now and the next match. Um, and I will stop at highlights, so if I make an offer for a player, if there's a, a huge offer or any offer for one of my players, I'll pause it. Well, I won't pause it, I'll slow it back down and I'll comment on it. Alright, enjoy the episode. So we get our first few offers in. I'm going to go for a counter offer for Gignac. Uh, I think I could have asked for a bit more, uh, but I'm going to go for a 10.5 mil. And I think I made a mistake with the next one. As you'll see, it's going to be Taliska. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Taliska, but I need someone with a bit more pace and a bit more uh, better dribbling skills. Uh, so I offered uh, 10.5. I have realized up there that it said 15.5 and 22 million I could have got for him. But uh, regardless of that, that's what I went for. And let's see how it works out. Uh, as you can see, they've gone ahead with the deal Stoke City for Zuniak. And we're just waiting for what's going to happen with Taliska. And they're happy to match and go ahead with it. So that's two players out already. Let's see if we... Uh, make an offer for any players and we can bring in any players in place of those two Incidentally right after that I get an offer for Jonas uh, This is a player that I really want to keep so I'm gonna go for a ridiculous amount of money This is West Ham offering 9 million. I'm gonna go for 25 
Uh, there's no way that they're going to accept that. And in the next few minutes, you're going to see that I'm going to loan out a bunch of other players, including uh, Jonathan Rodriguez, etc. I want them to gain some experience. I don't really want to get rid of them. Uh, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do for the next few minutes. So just before we go on to our next match, we got an offer for Salvio, another player I don't really want to get rid of, not for 13 million anyway, uh, so I'm going to put a 25 million counter offer, if they were to accept this, I'd accept it, but... Uh, they're not going to accept it, you're not going to see it because I've cut it out, but they don't accept it. And at this point, we're going to go into our next match. It's a Tassad Portugal match against the Roca. I think it's the second match we're playing away. Uh, and let's see how we do. I'm expecting a win. Again, Roca, a team that will fight for relegation uh, most of the time. We've played them before. Uh, it's a, it should be an easy win, and we should be uh, through to the next round of the Cup. No issues. Um, obviously our team's looking a little bit different there uh, but I'm going to go ahead with the way it's set up right now and let's go to the start of the match So here we are at the away match of the Tassa de Portugal against Aroca. We're playing at Aloha Park, which is definitely not Aroca Stadium. In fact, theirs is possibly a little bit smaller than this one. Uh, again, these teams tend to play pretty well at home. Uh, they'll defend and try and take you to penalties where uh, they'd actually have a chance of progressing. Uh, but I've got a good feeling. I think we're going to win this match. Uh, so I'm going to give it my all, I'm going to go all out attack and score a few goals. I'd like a high scoring match because I don't think I've scored uh, many goals recently. Uh, so I'm basically going to give it my best. Let's see how we get on and let's go straight to the highlights. And literally only five minutes into the game, Cristante makes this amazing run. Uh, it plays a nice through ball there to Jonas and he runs into the box and he wasn't going to miss that. He power shots it right into the back of the net. The goalkeeper had no chance. He did fall over there after taking that shot. I think he was a little bit off balance. Uh, let's check that replay. Yes, he was. He lost a bit of his balance, fell over, but what a shot. What a powerful shot right through the defender's leg. And we deserve to go 1-0 up. We started fantastically. Cristante in his, pretty much his first uh, uh, starting 11 match uh, played really well. Started off that move perfectly, created a fantastic goal. And it's um, uh, Aroca 0, Benfica 1. What a start. We're well on our way to getting through to the next round. It took around 14 minutes for a rocker to have any sort of possession, uh, but then uh, Roberto had this shot with his left foot, it goes wide off the near post. Uh, if it had gone any further in, uh, Julio Cesar would have got it, so it wasn't any uh, kind of a threat. Let's see that replay yet. Yeah. Julio Cesar had it well covered there, and so far their only shot, and the game remains nil-nil. Nonetheless, Aruka started getting more possession, uh, they started to attack a bit more, they clearly wanted to get back into this game, there was some nice passing around this 18-yard uh, box here, and it ultimately ended up in Roberto, which plays this beautiful pass here, and uh, Simo almost gets it in with his head, but it goes over the bar, I don't think um, Julio Cesar would have got to it, let's see that replay, he could have easily got it in, he was facing away from the goal, uh, so if he had been facing towards goal, he might have got it in, but it was their first dangerous shot, and they're definitely trying to get back into this game. And the game continued like that, Aroca kept piling on the pressure, obviously still trying to get back into this game, still having most of the possession. Tunoco plays a really nice cross here to Arturo, but he doesn't get to it. It's deflected to Roberto, he takes a nice shot, and it goes out for a corner. Um, I'm not going to show you the corner, nothing really happened there, it was deflected and went straight back to the Benfica players. Uh, so let's go to our next main highlight. So we reach half-time with a one-goal advantage. Uh, we started off really well. Aroca did have most of the possession in the first half. Uh, they had more shots than us as well. I had trouble controlling the game, but this is because these teams really do play a lot better when they're playing at home. Interestingly, you're going to see some interesting stats um, at half-time here. We had zero shots and zero on target. Even though we're 1-0 up, how does that work? I really don't know, and it's fucking pissed me off. Uh, but regardless, we're 1-0 up, uh, and I decided to put Lima in uh, for Jonas to give Jonas a little bit of a rest. And I know Lima has a bit of pace, which is good against teams like this uh, because he can sort of run away from the defenders and create chances and score goals as well. So let's see how we get on in the second half. 
So 66 minutes in, I take my first free kick with Lima. It does come a bit close to the top right-hand corner. Uh, the replay doesn't really show much because it's the wrong camera. It should be facing towards goal, but never mind. Uh, let's see what we can get from this corner. It's Salvia to take it. Hopefully find someone like Luizel um, or Lima even because he's, he's quite a tall player. I think he's good with his head. Uh, but now it's deflected and the ball lands straight to Williams. He takes a left footed shot and it goes wide off the far post. We could have gone 2-0 up there. Um, but I realised that I need to change the player as well because he's a bit tired. And I want to give some other players an opportunity. Uh, so I'm going to put uh, Ilizio in his place. Uh, give the player a break. At this point I was happy with the result but Luizel makes this crucial tackle here and Samaris has the intelligence to pass it to Lima and we can see there that Salvio is making a run for it. He's got Gaitan to the left of him, he does make the pass and he scores it. It was a bit of a sweaty goal but that was the most, well, uh, the most certain way of getting that goal. Nice celebration there, great goal from Gaitan, a nice little partnership there between Salvio and Gaitan. And these two players are just absolutely fantastic. Look at that pace from Salvio. Gaitan put himself in a great position. The defender could do nothing. He didn't even try to put his foot out to try and block that pass. And a great finish there from Gaitan with his left foot that he's famed for. Straight into the back of the net. And it's now been Fika 2 at Okanil. We're well on our way now uh, to get to the, I think it's the semi-final of the Portuguese Cup. And uh, hopefully we'll win it. And look at this beautiful midfield play, this triangle is a force to be reckoned with. Look at it, it's a very clear triangle there. Gaitan receives that ball, it's a fantastic opportunity. But look at that, he tries a trick shot and it goes wide off the near post. He could have easily put us 3-0 up. I know that we're pretty much through to the next round, uh, but that would have rounded off a perfect match. Um, and a great goal from a perfect player. Uh, he really deserved that, uh, but it looks like now the match will be 2-0. I'm, I'm fine with that, uh, but I hate it when players try trick shots um, and miss, uh, miss them. In, in situations like that, it's just unacceptable. Uh, but regardless of that, he's been a great player uh, today, and he fully deserves uh, the praise that he'll get at the end. And now this is Aroka's last chance. It's been a few minutes now into injury time. Uh, Julia says I picks up the ball easily and I feel that the referee is going to blow the whistle and there you go that's the end of the match we won 2-0 we proceed to the next round which I think is the semi-final let's go and see the match stats and there we go we ended up having three shots one on target they had four shots one on target and most of the possession uh, they did play pretty well in the first half we played a little bit better in the second we didn't regain that uh, possession uh, but there you go, Samaras got man of the match, he played really well, I think it was that goal that he created in the second half, a fantastic pass um, that ended up in the goal, and as you can see most of their team got around 6, I don't think anyone got 7, uh, but let's proceed to the next match and see what happens in between. So now we go on to a player that I really do admire, Anthony Lopez. He plays in Lyon at the moment. He's showing uh, really good potential there. So I really want to buy him uh, to replace Julio Cesar. I'm going to have Julio Cesar as a backup. 
uh, and hopefully have Anthony Lopez as the first keeper. If he accepts, that's if he moves. I don't know how much they're going to demand for him. Um, but it was a 78 overall, he's 7.5 million, so I thought I'd offer just under his value and see what Leon says. Um, but let's proceed through the season here. I have made some crazy offers. I've gone for players like João Moutinho, uh, Verratti, Perez, and Batshuayi, and Lacazette. But obviously, they've all come back uh, with huge uh, sums. Obviously, they don't want to sell Enzo Perez. Uh, Batshuayi is 17.5 million. I know I've got quite a bit of money, uh, but I need to be careful with how I spend it. Um, so let's proceed and see what they said about Anthony Lopez. So before that, I realized that I really need a CDM. I can't have Lisandro Lopez uh, playing in the CDM position all the time, and I need a decent backup. I saw Fernando, he's got really good potential. He's 22 years old. I think he'll get up to 83 if you play him regularly. I think he'll be my first man. I think Samaras is also a really good player, so I'll be rotating between them. That's if they really want to uh, sell me Fernando. They did uh, reject one of my bids, so I've decided... Um, to offer Ola John and pay 7 million to get this player. He really is worth it. I know Ola John is a great player, but I've got, uh, I've got, I've got plans to get another left midfielder or a left winger to replace him um, in the near future, which we'll see in the next episode. Uh, but this is the offer I gave, and let's see how it worked out. And before we see the results of those inquiries, we're going to have a match against Bast Freire. Uh, we're playing at home, it's a league match, and this is the one that will keep us hopefully on top of Porto in our goal to win the Primera Liga. So Bast Freire away, I thought we were playing at home, but they're, they're sort of a cannon fodder team, a team that uh, the top three or four teams in the league should beat with these. They're actually doing quite well, as you can see there, they're in fourth place. Uh, but the only difficulty that they're going to present is that there will be a defensive team. Uh, so getting that first goal is crucial early on. Um, Porto, as you could see there in the, in the league, was in first. But that's because we've got a game in hand. They've played one more than us. If we win this match, which we should, uh, we should comfortably get to first position. And hopefully in the next few matches, we should start pulling away and getting points on them. Anyway, let's go to the highlights and see how we did in this match. And again, around four minutes in, Cristante starts off the move again. He's been wonderful since I've been using him. Classy with an intelligent pass there to uh, Jonas. And he slots it in with his right foot. Who could it have been? Four minutes into the game, exactly the same as the last game. We needed that early goal uh, to prevent Pastor Freire just defending for the rest of the match. And he puts that beauty in, then runs to the camera. He wants people to know that he's there, he's staying, and he's the man for Benfica. What a wonderful player Jonas is. And uh, Defendi hasn't defended anything. It's quite ironic, his name. Um, but there was a little touch there from the defender. He turns beautifully, but look at the trajectory in that shot. It just curls to the far post. What a beautiful shot, and I love this guy. I hope he stays with my team for the, uh, at least a good uh, two, three seasons to come. Uh, I, I just wouldn't replace this guy for no one. And there is Julio says a <laughs> man about to be replaced. Uh, celebrating but what a wonderful goal and it's past Freda nil Benfica won we did what we needed to do and we're well on our way to getting the three points and exactly like the last game past Freda gained a bit of confidence and started attacking a few nice passes around the edge of the 18 yard box Mnoca, which actually means worms and that's the funny names in Portuguese football anyway Moreira takes this uh, right-footed shot uh, Julia Cesar could hold on to it and that could have easily become the equaliser that was really close. And it took another 20 minutes for us to see some action and it's from Pastor Freire again making some nice passing movements again having more of the possession uh, for this uh, first half but nice cross there to Moreira he couldn't get to it so he picks up the ball turns around makes a left footed shot but it was an easy save there for Julio Cesar and we're on the verge of the referee blowing the whistle for the first half. I didn't think I was going to get any more shots in, I thought the referee would blow the whistle by now, uh, but Salvio manages to dribble right into the box here, he takes a shot and it's rebounded off defenders and all sorts, uh, but defending man manages to pick up the ball and the referee blows the whistle for the half time and let's go and see the stats, that was damn close. 
And as you can see there, they had more shots, more on target, and more possession, as expected. But now what we have to do is we have to take some Morris out. As you can see, he's half dead there. Um, we're going to put Lisandro Lopez in. And, uh, of course, as you can see, there is the need for Fernando in the team. Um, hopefully he'll be the guy to, to replace Samaris when he's tired, and vice versa. I will be rotating them on a match by ba uh, match basis. And 59 minutes into the game, Pastor Freda was still going strong, a nice pass down the wing there. He's going to cross it into Moreira, he doesn't get his head to it, but it was dangerous. As Julia Sessa completely missed the ball there, it would have been straight into the back of the net. We were damn lucky there, not to concede the goal and get the equaliser. And it was around 78 minutes in that we finally had a chance on goal. It was a nice counter-attack. Uh, Pereira is going to play a nice ball down the middle. But look at this brilliant play between Classy Jonas, uh, Gaitan and Ola John. He makes the assistance for the goal. What a fantastic shot there by Gaitan. But the man that I've just offered to give away actually creates the assistance. Uh, great play there from Ola John. Um, but it's needed. I need to get rid of him uh, regardless of how well he's playing. Uh, but it was a fantastic goal there uh, from Gaitan. Let's go and see that replay. Brilliant triangle there uh, between Jonas, uh, Ola John and Gaitan. Um, let's see that replay. It started off with Classy. Uh, John passing it, uh, Jonas passing it to John. And uh, Gaitan finishing it off with a brilliant left-footed shot. Uh, right under the goalkeeper, through his legs. And a fantastic goal. It's now Benfica 2, pass to Freda 0. And uh, it looks like we're going to get those three points. We really needed this goal to um, sort of put a buffer between that, uh, the chance of getting only one point. And uh, now I've decided that I need Talvin in the right midfield. He's a really good player, a great replacement if I decide to sell Salvio off this season. Uh, of course, we'll need to buy a replacement as well, so we have two good players on the right midfield. I'll probably go for a younger player uh, to replace Talvin. They've got good room for progress, uh, but let's see if we can fi uh, finish this goal off, or this game off, uh, with some more goals. And we certainly can finish the game off with uh, uh, just at least one more goal as uh, Pasfreda decide to go on a great counter-attack here. Look, they've put four men forward. Uh, Sambento picks up the ball, passes it to Senga. He strikes it right into the back of the uh, net. It was a nice uh, volley there from the player, uh, but that leaves the game at uh, Pasfreda 1, Benfica 2. Let's see that replay. It was a nice through ball there. The player receives it well. What a great left-footed volley uh, there from that player. Uh, goes straight past Julia Cesar. Again, he was way off his line there. Hopefully something that Anthony Lopez doesn't do if we get the player. Uh, but now that gives them a slim chance of getting back into this game. Uh, but I'm going to go defensive now and I'm not going to let them uh, get that equaliser. I'm desperate for the three points. Plus I want to be ahead of Porto. And being defensive paid off in the end as we got the 2-1 win. Uh, they didn't really have any more chances after that, uh, their goal. Uh, but I'm happy with the result. I didn't really enjoy conceding that goal. Uh, it was something I was trying to avoid because I want to get a good goal difference uh, and we've got a really tough match next uh, I think it's against Porto or maybe Boa Vista then Porto but it's a couple of really tough matches uh, Boa Vista seem to be my nemesis I got a draw with them I found them really hard to play against but there you go, six, uh, 3 on target 6-4 on target we had a bet, better shot uh, average there uh, but 55% possession to Pastor Ferreira, uh, 45 for Benfica. Let's see the ratings. Julia says I got man of the match. I really don't understand why, uh, because at least Jonas or Gaitan should have got that. Even Ola John with that nice uh, through ball. And Classy uh, also made his mark. But as you can see there, most of their players got six or below. Uh, but let's go and see the results uh, of our transfer market. So we got a range of offers, uh, Dele, I put a counter offer for 3.5 million, uh, Jonas as well, I'm going to reject this one because I think 8 million is pretty pathetic and I don't really want to get rid of the player at the moment anyway. Uh, someone then makes an offer for uh, Arturo Moraes, again 3.5, hopefully I'll get money for both of those players, I'll have plenty of money in the bank to buy some, uh, some players that I want. Um, and it's Eduardo Salvio as well. I'm going to go for 25 million. I don't think they're going to accept it. And uh, let's leave it at that for now. We, we are going to get some revelations in the next episode. Our next match is against Porto, as you'll see now. Um, and yeah, we'll find out what happened in the next episode. So it's silly season. It's starting now. 
and it's an exciting episode coming up. Do not miss it, guys. Uh, thank you for all your comments, likes, uh, views, and for all the love I've been getting from you guys. It's been fantastic. And uh, vivo glorioso!